What's going on YouTube? Back at it again. I thought I would share this new acquisition I have, for lack of a better term. Um, I got a mobile workbench similar to the mobile toolbox. They're both by Husky. Uh, recent acquisition for my shop. It's going to be a really, really good tool. Uh, maybe it'd be something you can use in your shop. It'd be good if you're trying to do prep, if you're just trying to do edit some YouTube videos, something I do as well. If you're trying to sew. Whatever, it's a lot of different options you can do. I have some pros and cons. First, let's give you a quick layout of the actual bench itself. I mean, here we have it. This is the 46 inch adjustable height work table by Husky. It's, uh, it's 46 by 24, so 46 inches wide, 24 inches in depth. Uh, the height goes from 26 inches up to 42 inches. That just depends on if you have um, the casters installed like I do it does include three by two inch um, poly it's like a polyurethane poly some type of polyurethane type caster or you can leave uh, four leveling feet if you just want to leave it as a as, as a more of a stationary table or desk so the top itself is a pair of wood or a rubber wood. Uh, so it's manufactured in Taiwan where you can find the pear wood or the rubber wood tree. It's all over the place there. It's uh, the top is 1.2 inches. So it's almost one and a quarter inches thick. This was originally released in 2016. It has been a, I mean, it's just been a tremendous seller for Home Depot and Husky. So they just keep turning it out. I have the model which has two drawers. So the drawers have a capacity of 35 pounds each. The drawers are about 16 inches in depth and they're about two inches in height. So if you're gonna be looking to keep sockets in there or something like that, this may not be the drawer for you. The drawers do not come with the liner. I purchased this liner aftermarket. That is one of the cons I would mention with the drawer itself. The drawers also are not soft closed. So once you get it here, you gotta kind of force it the rest of the way. So not soft closed drawers. Uh, the product weighs a hundred and about 112 pounds. So I opted, I selected a Home Depot in my area that only had two left on purpose. There was others that had more, but the two that were left were the floor models. They were already assembled. I was able to talk to the, the manager of the store and get a 10% discount just to get a one that was already assembled was something that I wanted this here so if you order it normally you do have to assemble the whole thing if you do the same thing I did which is you know order one which is already assembled be careful because there's been lots of people that have been manipulating these things and mine have scratches in it my drawers did function properly so I would check that before you leave the store make sure that the drawers open and close properly because people instead of closing the drawer just straight forward would close it at an angle which can you know mess up the drawer so i sanded mine down with 120 grit sandpaper to kind of get rid of some of those scratches it does have like a, a protective wax that comes from the factory but you can add your own paste wax i would advise you add more paste wax to it if you're going to be using this as a traditional workbench it is a hand crank so you put this uh, this hand crank into this tin, this little hex hole here, and you crank it up by hand. I'll show you how that works here in a second. It's It can get annoying. It takes about 30, 45 seconds to go from the lowest setting to the highest setting. So that's one thing that I would say, just be prepared for some of that. Uh, let me show you a few modifications I'm going to make on mine, and you can consider doing the same. So a few modifications that I'll be making on my bench. I've already sanded down the top with 120 grit. I uh, brought it all the way up to 220 grit sandpaper with the intention. I mixed mahogany gel stain with some ebony stain to try to distress the top. So I'm going to whip out the blowtorch and burn the top some more. And um, I'm actually going to hit it with a hammer and kind of distress the top a little bit more. I'm going for the distress look. 
So I'm not a big fan of this crank feature. I mean, this takes, a, just look at this. I'm at the top, but that, I mean, that takes a while. And if I'm gonna be adjusting this multiple times a day, which I will be, I'm not gonna be a big fan of that. So I'm gonna take my drill, bring my drill down to a reasonable setting, keep it around 14 or so, uh, keep it on low. I'm just using a regular drill driver. I'm not using a, a impact drill. And the actual workbench itself is the same as a 10 millimeter hex socket. So I can hook that here. Now, instead of having to crank it up and down by hand, now I can put this in. Just like that, I'm done. The only thing I will say, I will caution, if you're gonna use this method, that you need to keep the bearings inside of this lubricated. You know, so I'm gonna hit mine with some silicone spray, the same type of spray you, you spray on like a garage door. You don't wanna use regular WD-40. WD-40 is made for cleaning. It's not made for lubrication, so it will eventually evaporate. So hit it with some type of silicone spray inside those bearings itself. I decided to put the casters on mine versus the leveling feet so that I can move mine around. I will be moving it around in different parts of my shop for use. On the side here, I've already put a couple of, uh, you know, little cheap command hooks that I'm gonna use for hanging headphones. So my setup primarily is going to be as a garage work desk. So I've already on the bottom here, added a extension cord um, surge protector. And so my intent with this surge protector is to run the cable and this entire unit will be one cord plugged into the wall. So that way, if I need to move it, I could plug it into an extension cord and everything that's plugged up on top will go with me. I'm primarily gonna be using this iMac that's over here and the desk itself is going to sit in front of my little charging wall I got here. So it sits in front of this charging wall, it'll be plugged up there and I can move it whenever I see fit. So what are my final thoughts? Uh, the steel is not the heaviest of gauge. You know, the my, my toolbox or my, my actual mobile kind of like work toolbox is 19 gauge steel. Remember we talked about gauges of steel is similar to gauges of wire. The lower the gauge, the better. So I don't know what gauge steel this is, but I can't imagine that if you bump into it with the wrong tool or a hammer or something like that, you will dent, dent the steel, so be ready to pop out some, some dents. The workbench is not that robust. It does say have a work capacity of 300 pounds, but that's not in one specific spot. So that's really gonna be like, you know, spread out 300 pounds across the entire top so i wouldn't advise mounting a vice to this i just can't imagine that being a good idea you know especially if you're going to be trying to clamp stuff to it maybe that'd be okay but a whole vice i probably wouldn't do that but if you're just looking for a solution for maybe a room in your house a sit stand solution if you're looking for a solution for your shop you know a solution for your office this might be something for you maybe if you keep a drill with you then it'd be easier to go from sit stand even faster if you don't mind the hand crank. If you're only gonna be going, you know, moving once or twice a day, the hand crank might not be that big of a deal. Uh, the drawers limitations is kind of something I did not want. You know, I'm six foot two. When this is in the full, the lowest position here, you know, my legs don't really go underneath here. So I wanted the model that didn't include the drawers but those weren't pre-assembled in the store and I wasn't even trying to go through the headache of assembling this, you know, if you, but, so I will have to keep it a little bit higher for ergonomic purposes. You kind of want your elbows parallel to the deck when you're typing and that's not really happening for me because I can't go that much lower because of the drawers. So I have to raise my seat up, maybe find a seat that allows me to raise my seat up. So that's something you got to think about is if you're over five foot 10, this might not be the specific setup for you, you might want to get the one that doesn't have the drawers if you're over five foot ten. But if you're under five foot ten, 
it's probably going to be a great setup. You got a sewing room, you know, you got somewhere where you need to keep the materials like right near you for your actual project. This might be a setup for you. Uh, you know, if you're a mechanic, I, I don't know about this. Maybe you can make it work. I would probably go for a tool cart versus this thing. Uh, this, the drawers can't be locked. It's easily bumped, you know, but for me, it's going to work just great. So go for it. You got the money. I got this for $219 plus the 10% discount, you know, so it's not that bad of a deal. They make them from 46 inches. I go, to, I think they go all the way out to 72 inches. They're all 24 inches in depth, no matter which one you buy. So, you know, if you need more room, go bigger. I decided to only go 46. It's a lot more mobile around my shop, but you know, buy whatever works for you. In the meantime, if you're not already a subscriber to this channel, hit the uh, subscription button. Hit that like button on your way to make a comment. Leave a comment, man. What do you think about these things? They've been pumping these things out for five years now. So obviously they know what they're doing. Uh, you know, how do you feel about uh, the fact that it's not made in America? Everything's not made in America, but at least it's not a Chinese one, right? And, you know, make sure you turn on that bell notification. I will be coming out with a dog bug out kit and a dog like EDC for what I keep for my dog just in case something goes down. And we also have the video on the awning I just got from my truck. Plus what I keep in my toolbox, you guys requested it. So I will be doing what I keep in my actual tool kit in my truck. In the meantime, I'm glad y'all came back and I look forward to talking to y'all soon. I'll catch you later.